Hi everyone, my name is Hassain and in this video we are going to talk about Gateway Aggregation Pattern. Gateway Aggregation Pattern fits under two categories of cloud design patterns, design and implementation and operational excellence. As the name suggests, Gateway Aggregation Pattern tries to aggregate multiple individual requests into one single request. Now it's good to mention the related patterns for the Gateway Aggregation Pattern. First of them is Backend for Frontends Pattern. And I'm going to put a link for this video if you are interested to review this pattern. Also we have Gateway of Loading Pattern and Gateway Routing Pattern. Hopefully you are going to make a video about these two patterns in future. Now let's go to the scenarios to help us understand how the Gateway Aggregation Pattern will help us to send one single request instead of multiple individual requests. Let's assume we have three services, service A, service B, and service C. Those services could be built on Azure App Service or Functions app. Then we have the client or consumer application that wants to perform one task that would need to send requests to multiple services, A and B and C. So the clients will have to send a separate request to service A and receive the response back. Same thing with service B and C. And this is the first challenge we have in here. We are putting too much pressure on the client by letting them send separate requests to multiple services and receive multiple responses. And then they have to aggregate those responses to figure out what is the outcome of that task. Whether it's been succeeded or failed or partially succeeded or declined or whatever. And it would be even better if we created an endpoint, so the client will have to send one single request to this endpoint and receive one single response about the outcome of this task. Also, we are allowing the client to get too much into the service architecture of our system. So in order to perform one task, the client has to communicate with three different services. This level of intervention is not required. It would be even better if we have something in between to hide all of these backend services from the client request. The client doesn't need to know all this information about our services at all. Now let's move to the second scenario. Let's assume that our task has been extended and now it needs to get some data from service D. Then the client has to send a request to service D and consider service D response along with other services responses which is going to be a continuous changing process to the client's application. Every time we change something in one task, the client has to update their code to call or communicate with that new service. Now, after we have seen these challenges, let's see how the gateway aggregation pattern will help us to resolve these problems. The solution lies in having one endpoint, our gateway. So the client will have to send the request to one endpoint. And then the gateway is going to split the request and send it to multiple services as required. And then the gateway is going to receive the responses back from different services and aggregate those responses and send one response back to the client. At that point, the client has to know nothing about all of the services that we have in our system. All the client has to know, just the gateway and the point that he has to send the aggregated request to it. Also, when we extend our task and add service D, then we will have to build the communication between our gateway and service D and consider its response in the aggregation process. And the client will know nothing about service D in the solution. All the client might feel about is maybe adding more input parameters or receiving more data in the response but at the end, the client knows nothing except the endpoint for the gateway. And this is the solution for this problem. It has two lenses, operational excellence, where it's going to make the life easier for the customer. The customer or the client doesn't have to deal with multiple services in order to perform one task. It's a lot of overload for the clients. And also a security lens because we are hiding our service architecture from the client because they don't need to know the service architecture of our system. Now let's say that those services are implemented using Azure Functions app. The gateway could be 
Azure Durable Function. And if you haven't heard about Durable Function before, it's an extension of Azure Function that allows you to write stateful functions in a serverless environment. Now let's have a quick look at Durable Function implementation patterns. First one is fan out, fan in. When you get a single request and then fan it out to multiple Azure Function apps, and then you receive the responses from these different functions and aggregate them to have one output. This implementation pattern works well with the scenario we have talked about before. Also, we have function chaining. When the output of one function is going to be the input of another function and so on, and then you want to have one output at the end. Also, you could use it as an HTTP API or monitoring or home interaction or aggregator. I am not going to jump too much into the details of durable function implementation patterns. It's out of the scope of this video. I just wanted to touch on them really quickly to help you imagine how we can use durable function as an implementation for this pattern. However, I am going to put a link in the description of this video if you are interested to read more about these different implementation patterns for the durable function. Now let's get back to our scenario. And I have put down here the fan out, fan in implementation pattern, where the client is going to send the request to the gateway, and then the gateway is going to fan it out to multiple function apps. And then when the function apps finish the execution and send it back, it's going to fan it back in to the gateway. So this pattern works well with the scenario that we have talked about. Hopefully this is now clear enough for you. Now let's talk about different considerations you need to keep in mind when using this pattern. You don't need to have any coupling between your gateway and the backend services. Also to reduce latency, you need to make sure that the gateway is near as possible to the backend services. You don't need to put the gateway in a separate Azure region or you don't need to put it in the front end layer very far from the backend services. Try to make them as close as possible to each other, geographically, physically, and logically. As you might expect, it's going to be a single point of failure for our solution, so you need to consider have a containerization or multiple instances for the gateway. Also, it's going to be a performance bottleneck, since it's going to be one gateway to receive all requests from all clients, then you need to monitor the performance of your gateway very carefully and have a scalability plans in place. You may have done load testing for the backend services separately, and you still have to do load testing for the gateway itself. You need to be very clear how many requests your gateway will be able to take from clients and whether your scalability plans are effective or not. Also, you need to consider implementing some resiliency patterns like bulkhead or retry. And if you are interested, I am going to put a link for bulkhead video if you are interested to review it. Also consider if it's okay for your gateway to return partial data if one of the services is unavailable for any reason. This is a business decision that you need to make with your stakeholders. Also make sure to use asynchronous I.O. This is to ensure that any delays in the backend services are not going to affect the gateway. Make sure you are using distributed tracing with correlation IDs. Monitor requests and responses between the client and the gateway, between the gateway and the backend services, and all the way back. Also consider return cached data as a failover strategy. Now let's see when you should use this pattern. When the client needs to communicate with multiple backend services to perform one operation. Also, when the client may use a network that has a significant delays, like a mobile network. When you shouldn't use this pattern, when the client send a number of operations to a single service. It's better if you implemented a batch operation for the service rather than implementing gateway aggregation pattern. Also, if the client or application is located near the backend services and the latency is not a big deal for your application. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I hope now it's clear for you what the gateway aggregation pattern is about. 
when you should use it, when you shouldn't, what are the different challenges that the gateway aggregation pattern is trying to solve, what are the best practices, how you can use Azure Durable function as an implementer for this pattern. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question, please feel free to put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.